Hello and welcome to video number one of the advanced course for NADEN. In this course, we will be covering everything you need to know to become an expert workflow builder. In this video specifically, we'll talk about how data flows through NADEN workflows. In the beginner course, we started to create short branches. So you might have wondered, if we have multiple branches, what order do the different nodes in those branches execute in. So we're going to talk about node execution order. For workflows created in version 1.0 and above, NADEN will execute each branch in turn, completing one branch before starting another. Branches are ordered based on their position in the canvas from topmost to bottommost. If two branches are at the same height, it is the leftmost branch that will execute first. In this workflow, you can see that the node execution order would be wait, then wait one, then wait two and wait three, followed by wait four and wait five. So we'll be going top to bottom, left to right. This can be changed on a workflow basis. However, it is not recommended. This will execute uh, the first node of each branch, then the second node of each branch, and so on and so forth. When building workflows where branches depend on each other's output, it is always recommended to merge branches together before using the data from those branches, instead of changing the node execution order. As covered in the beginner course, we can use the if node to split data into multiple branches. The if node splits the input items down to distinct branches, whether the condition is true or false. We already saw this in the beginner course. We won't be covering this in this video. We can also use the switch node to create n branches and also assign a fallback branch, creating n total branches that split the items amongst them. So here we have 10 items in the switches input, and these are being split into one item, one item, one item, and seven items, totaling 10. A similar effect can be produced by dragging two output branches from a single node. This will send all of the items from the node's output down each one of those branches, following the order of execution we mentioned previously. This can be useful when you want to execute two separate sets of distinct actions from a set target point. The same way that we can split data into different branches, we can also merge data from different branches using the merge node. The merge node is a peculiar node because it has not one, but two inputs. The node waits for data from both branches to arrive and then performs one of the following merge options. Append, combine, choose. Append will simply output the sum of both branches, appending them one to another. Choose will let you, well, choose one, the other, or no items to pass. This can be useful to ensure that two or more branches have finished executing before continuing with the workflow. And finally, combine lets you merge the inputs by field, position, or all combinations. A good mental model for the um, merge node is the SQL join operation. Inner and outer joins are equivalent to keeping matches or not keeping matches. The left join is equivalent to enhancing or enriching the first input branch and the right join enhancing the second input branch. Unions are equivalent to appends in this case. 
Another useful node when dealing with sets of items is the loop over items node. Sometimes when dealing with large amounts of data or when using certain nodes, we need to be able to treat items as individual sets of items. In comes the split in batches node or loop over items. It allows you to split the input items into different batches of a given size. For example, here, the batch size is of one. And so there is only going to be one item going down the loop. Most of the time, you don't need this node. And it then nodes already execute once per item. However, this can be a very useful node when dealing with certain types of nodes. Some nodes will return n items, even though they have only one input item. An example of this would be Google Sheets. If we are reading data from a sheet, we're going to be reading potentially n lines of data. Here, if we need to read multiple sheets because we have multiple items, we can loop over the items to be able to read each sheet per item. We'll cover this in the um, examples. Loop over items can also be useful when dealing with API rate limits. So sometimes APIs will sometimes APIs will only allow us to make x actions over y amount of time. So for example, only 10 calls per minute or 100 calls every 10 seconds. Loop over items can help us spread out those different API calls, especially if we have a lot of them to do. By splitting into batches, we can use the wait node and make sure that we aren't overloading the API. You can access the different runs in the output panel here by clicking on run. This will be useful for understanding what items are going through the different runs and how they're being changed as you loop over the items. The loop over items node, as well as all the other nodes that are in the loop you create will have a green number next to the green check mark indicating what number loop they're on. You can also access the different output items in the same way as you did for the loop over items node itself, where you can see for each different iteration of a loop, what were the output items for the nodes in the loop. So here we are in NADN, and the uh, first thing I'd like to show you is a quick example on the node execution order. So here, if we test this workflow, and I'm using the wait node, so we can sort of see it go through uh, at a bit more visible rate. Here we'll have the first branch that will be executed in its entirety. And then once we are finished with this branch, we'll move on to the second branch that will execute completely, followed by the third branch that will execute completely. So keep this in mind when building workflows, uh, branches will execute top to bottom and left to right. So now we're going to be using uh, this workflow to show two different ways of using the merge node. So here we have a very simple workflow um, that we pretty much covered in the beginner course we get a list of 10 contacts. We use the if node to create two branches, depending on if it's a personal email or a professional email. And here we're going to be using the edit fields node to add a email type personal or email type professional. So if we execute this workflow, we see the split. And what we might want to do here is now continue working on all of these contacts as a whole. So using here the merge node, I can add in and connect the two inputs. And we can see here we have three items here, seven items here. And if I select the append, it will combine 
all items of input one and all items of input two. So here, if I test this step, we're back to 10 items. And each item will now have a email type personal or email type professional. Uh, because we had our top branch that was personal, we have all of our personals first, and then all of our professionals. A, another way of using the merge node. Uh, so what we're going to do is give ourselves give ourselves a little bit of space is to um, do what we call enrichment. So what we could do here, let's just give ourselves a bit of space. Here, I have another Google sheet that we're going to read. And this Google Sheets contains information about the companies. So if I execute this, we're going to see we have information on the companies, their website and their country. So what we can do here is on the branch of professionals, so people who have an associated company, we can enrich these contacts with information from the companies. Here, if we were to use a simple append, we would have different items for the contacts and for the companies. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to combine the data. Um, what we need to do here is figure out how can we um, link the contacts to the companies. So I'm going to show you two ways. The first way, and we could simply do it here would be uh, to add a key called domain. Here using the email and a little bit of JavaScript, we could split the email at the at sign, and then take the first value. So this is going to give us everything after the at sign. So if we test this step for each contact, we have the domain. And now each contact has a domain key. And each company also has a domain key that we can see here website. So here we can add a new merge node. And this time, instead of appending, we're going to combine. Here we have the different inputs, we can see that we have the Google Sheet inputs and the tag as professional. To make it a little bit clearer here, let's rename this to get companies. And looking at the merge node, we can see that to merge by fields, we need to give the name of a field in input one, and the name of a field in input two. This is basically going to be our matching key. So our two inputs are get companies input one, and then this set, sorry, this edit fields node, which is going to be input two that we can read up here input one and input two. From get companies, we want the website. And from tag as professional, we want the domain. Here, we would like to we can choose between keeping matches, keeping non matches or keeping everything. In this case, uh, we're, because we're doing an enrichment, what we're going to do is keep all of input two with data from input one added in. This is because we're working on a contact basis. And we want to enrich all of the contacts that have professional emails with um, company information. So here, if I test this step, we can now see that Marcus Bennett from quantum, we now have the information from the other sheet uh, that was that contained information on their website and the country. This is a great way that we can enrich um, branches with extra information, this can be a Google sheet, a database, an API call, and then we just merge the data, uh, depending on the field. If we wanted to do a 
enrichment uh, through, for example, API calls, where for each item, we would do one HTTP request, we could merge not by fields, but by position and have a very similar result. Just finishing off this workflow, I can pull this in here. And now if we execute the workflow, we can see that we've created two distinct branches. And this one, we need to set it as execute once because we only need one time all of the companies. And we can see that we have very similar to the first uh, result when we just did the simple append merge, 10 items here, a split, and an enrichment, oops. <laughs> 10 items here, a split with an if, three up here, seven down here that get enriched, and then we merge them back in to 10. And so here we have pretty much the same information as the sheet, but with a bunch more information that we added through these branches. Thanks for listening to this first video of the NADN Advanced course, where we covered node execution order, splitting and merging branches. In the next video, we'll take a deep dive into some more advanced NADN nodes. See you in the next one.